So a few network tools to start with, just to get your feet wet, would be some of these following. Nmap, certainly got to mention that as one of the very top networking tools. Out of all the tools that we'll talk about today, this may very well be the one that there probably isn't necessarily a better solution for. Um, I definitely say probably because that's, that's a really bold statement to make in information security is to say that any tool is kind of the top. But Nmap is just one of those iconic ones that is, um, let's just say it's, it's definitely got market penetration for sure. It's, it's very, very popular because it does a great job. It's very flexible and it has a reasonable balance between features and speed. Now, if you pick a particular um, task, it's not necessarily the best tool for that one particular task. So don't be afraid to combine it with other tools for maximum effect. So for example, if you wanted to quickly find all the open ports on a large network, let's say that you're scanning an internet facing network and it's a slash 16 for example. That's a lot of ports, that's a lot of computers potentially. Maybe you would use a tool like mass scan to go just identify the hosts and the ports and then feed that information into NetMap to run back over those open ports and figure out what services are running on there. But all in all, if you only have one tool for identifying hosts on the network and identifying what services are bound to those ports on that operating system, this may be the, the best if you had to get it down to one. So it'll identify hosts and ports and services and platforms and more information. It is fast, not the fastest, but it is fast. And it's very configurable, very good mixture of features and, and speed. TCP dump is very good at capturing network traffic. It can capture a lot of traffic very quickly. It's relatively lightweight when it comes to capturing traffic. An alternative uh, could be um, different kinds of other packet sniffers. And there's certainly, again, if you're talking about a very particular task, like maybe you're trying to capture wireless network packets over USB on a Windows 10 computer. Okay, so there maybe you want an AirP cap or something like that for these very particular tasks. But again, generally speaking, for the largest number of use cases, for most of the time, TCP dump is going to be a good option for capturing network traffic. And it captures into a standardized format, the PCAP, that is very interchangeable with other tools like Wireshark and Network Miner and, and other tools that we'll look at. As far as actually looking at the packets, analyzing the packets, doing statistics on the packets, doing research on the packets, graphically Wireshark is another one of those iconic tools. It has support for a huge number of protocols. It has a lot of advanced features like the statistics and the packet reassembly that are very useful. It can also capture packets, and it also has a uh, companion tool, T-Shark, that's really good at um, reading in the packets and searching packets just to get the packets that you want. Because one of the drawbacks with any graphical tool is going to be that if you read in very, very large PCAP files, it can get kind of slow to process all those packets. And Honestly, if you're reading in a large PCAP, chances are you're probably only interested in a relatively small percentage of the packets in any given network trace. So it's probably best to use a tool like TCP dump or T-Shark to filter down the packets to a more manageable size of more interesting packets and then open that in a tool like Wireshark. But as far as having an easy to use tool that has a nice graphical interface, Wireshark is great. The Traceroute, the Linux version specifically, is a great tool for just figuring out the path 
from where you're at to the destination that you're interested in and the computers that are in between. Now Windows has its version of traceroute, the tracert.exe program, but it has some pretty severe limitations. Now more recently, Windows has PowerShell. And so you can effectively get or create the version of traceroute that's in Linux, but Linux already has it, so why? Right? It works great. So the Linux version of traceroute can, can perform the traceroute function over ICMP just like TraceRT can, but it also can do it over arbitrary ports and a lot of different protocols. You can do traceroutes over TCP, UDP, ICMP. When you're talking about TCP and UDP, you can pick any port you want and combine all that together to do a much better traceroute. Because if you're going to do a traceroute on the internet, chances are, especially if you're on a corporate network, that at some point those ICMP packets are probably going to be blocked or dropped. Port 80 is a good choice. But, right. So like TCP though, port 80 or 443, like if you know there's a website there or if you know there's an FTP server there, then you can pick a port that you've already confirmed is open, come back and do the trace route over TCP 21 or you know, UDP 53 or whatever you believe is open because you've already tested it and found some application running at some port. So if you're going to do trace routes, I'd recommend at least giving the, the Linux version a try. And by the way, in Linux, it's spelled all the way out, trace route, not trace uh, RT like we're used to in Windows. And for identifying hosts, HPing3 is a great tool. It is um, very much a packet crafter in a lot of ways. You can pick the protocol that you want, and you can also even set the individual flags inside of the TCP packets, which is great. It comes already packaged in Kali Linux. It's, it's called HPing3, so you do have to type in the 3 to get to it. Um, it can also do IPv6 as well. So you can send out discovery packets. And that's a, that's a lot more power, a lot more power than you're going to get in ping or ping 6 built into Windows, Linux, and Mac. Um, the flexibility is, is really great that you get with the HPing3 for doing basically what ping is meant to do. But you don't have the limitations of the protocols and the ports and stuff like you do with um, the regular ping. And the last tool we'll talk about, generally speaking, of tools that you definitely want to have in the toolbox as far as doing packet analysis is Scapy. So when you're trying to learn how to do packet analysis, it can help a lot in your understanding to actually create the packet yourself, send it across the network, capture it with TCP dump, and open it in Wireshark so that you can see the actual end-to-end -end process from packet creation all the way to displaying it in your graphical tool. And Scapy allows you to create just about any arbitrary packet because what it does is it simply offers you the packet protocols like IP, TCP, UDP as little modules. You decide how to <laughs> assemble the modules and you decide the properties to set on the modules. So you can create an IP packet and then put on top of it a TCP packet and then decide that the source port for that TCP packet is going to be 53 and decide the destination port for that is going to be 444 and then decide to put some data on top of it that says hello everybody and send that packet across the network. And what you choose is completely arbitrary. You just fill in the fields the way you want based on the protocols. It's easy to use and it allows you just to, to assemble those Lego blocks any way you want. In fact, there's no reason why you couldn't create an IP packet that's carrying a UDP. UDP is carrying HTTP, HTTP is carrying TCP. Does it make any sense? I don't know. It, I am the beholder, right? I have the receiver. But the fact is, is you could create that and then send that over the wire, capture it, show it in your protocol analyzer, 
And because you're controlling the end-to-end -end process, the opportunity for learning is a lot greater.